Welcome to From the Democratic Left. It's our end of the year show. Uh, we do this traditionally, uh, actually not that often, but traditionally. And we have, I think, is going to be a big scoop. But I know the good news will travel so rapidly among the right wing. That is, and here's the big scoop, big Jim Blycamp, a frequent guest on this show, is leaving town. Oh. <laughs> and yes, he's leaving town. And he's promised to reveal on this show where exactly he is tattooed with the mark of the beast. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> so you're out of here. This is it. This is it. After, after five and a half years, Bob, it appears that uh, my legacy in Columbus is going to boil down to this program. I'm leaving. No, <laughs> no this no, isn't the Larry Levine show, Jim. <laughs> Just sit down there. <laughs> no, it's very nice to be here. It is. Very nice. Uh, you've been here before. You've been in the basement. Yes, I have. Now, we have, yeah. these are Christmas decorations. Now, I want to get to some of the myths or perhaps facts about you. By, by the way, would this be a, uh, a Supreme Court uh, uh, allowed kind of uh, Christmas display with uh, well, let's various see. symbols? Well, since there's no religious symbols and uh, it has yeah. a secular intent, Jim, I think a liberal like yourself could live with this. I think it would pass constitutional muster, muster. especially in a blasphemous program like, like this, this one. Now, is it true that you've spent most of your life dissing the baby Jesus? Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> okay. Not at all. I, I, by the way, that's. Uh, I, I'm really kind of glad you, you brought that up because really, Bob, we should not make assumptions, and every year at this time we should we should uh, run through that. Uh, the fact that uh, that uh, many of us, I would dare say, when it comes right down to it, uh, I think once people understand the issue, most of us. Uh, in this country, uh, respect and, and understand uh, the need for a uh, separation of church and state. That includes some uh, very religious people to to believe in, uh, to respect the uh, tradition of a separation of church and state is not in any way to show disrespect for uh, for religion or, in your terminology, to diss the baby, baby Jesus. Jesus. But is it not true that every single year you favored kicking? the nativity scene off the courthouse lawn in Delaware. I think we're better off without a, uh, a without uh, religious symbols on uh, public taxpayer uh, funded uh, property. I say that as a religious person. And, a lot of people won't believe it, but I am. <laughs> and on the other hand, you have no problem whatsoever with state auto putting up the world's largest nativity scene on its private property. Not at property. all. Not at all. In fact, uh, I haven't seen it, but the pictures I saw in the paper I thought were very interesting. And you would defend their right to do that as a, as a private concern, would you not? With my life. Okay. <laughs> Other things, uh, a very successful uh, tenure with the Birch campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bob. <laughs> well, I just want to say, uh, I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know, and I think uh, probably 90% <laughs> of them don't know, uh, that I was the uh, communications director of the uh, Rob Birch uh, campaign for governor. And I'm very uh, proud of, uh, of having done that. We, uh, we were at a tremendous uh, disadvantage in a number of respects, uh, notably a financial uh, disadvantage. We did not have uh, nearly the money. I think we had something like one one hundredth, if that, of the money that the Voinovich campaign had. And of course, uh, it's hardly the world's best kept secret that this was a, a heavily uh, Republican year. Uh, that's usually the case uh, for the party that occupies the White House during a midterm election. It was even uh, more so the case uh, uh, this year. So uh, we were running uphill uh, in almost every respect uh, you can imagine. But I think uh, for those who uh, bothered to pay attention, and by the way, I would credit uh, the major uh, print media of the state with doing a, a pretty good job of, of covering uh, the issues. Uh, for anybody who wanted to uh, uh, follow the campaign, there was ample evidence that uh, uh, Rob Birch, I think, was interested in giving uh, government back to the, the people of Ohio who, uh, who have not had it, as far as I'm concerned, uh, during the Voinovich administration. Well, let me, uh, let me actually, in, in all fairness, I think you did a great job uh, as the media director, which would influence 
the print media. I think you got your message out there, but uh, the reality is who reads today? Isn't elections pretty much decided by these 30-second yeah. propaganda commercials? Either your opponent is a, virtually a criminal and you're virtually it's a, a saint. It's a real problem. It's a real problem, and one of my, uh, well, I think uh, there's been there's been so much media attention. I'm talking about free media attention, the attention of commentators this year to the uh, nature of these spots. It's it's really interesting. Uh, this this I think uh, was the year when it once and for all became the thing to do to to uh, basically cover the campaign by way of covering the spots. Uh, there there, were, there may have been more. Uh, print and, and free media attention to uh, the spots uh, with, with good reason than, than was given to, you know, a lot of campaign events uh, around the state. So you were in talk radio and uh, many people have said that the uh, uh, Limbaugh and the Limnoids or whatever they are has had a tremendous impact on changing the nature of debate in this country. Uh, we don't see people, when you, I remember when you first came to town, there was an article, right? There's a liberal with a microphone. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't see too many liberals with a microphone anymore, do you? Uh, no, but I, I do think, uh, well, within, within the next few uh, years, uh, especially, uh, perish the thought if the uh, Republicans retake the White House, in uh, 96, you will probably uh, hear uh, more liberal points of view on the air, as was the case in, uh, in, in the 80s in this country. Actually, you look back at, uh, at, at talk radio and the uh, balance between, uh, between uh, liberal and conservative opinion, and by the way, sometimes that's a little too simplistic. I mean, there are, there are uh, variations of those viewpoints. There are, there are a fair number of uh, People I would uh, describe as libertarians who uh, who mix uh, a certain amount of economic conservatism with a certain amount of social liberalism uh, on the air, and, and those points of view tend to be overlooked when you talk strictly about liberal and conservative. But in the 80s, there was actually a pretty good uh, balance. There were a lot of uh, uh, talk show hosts from city to city uh, attacking very aggressively uh, the policies of Ronald Reagan. Okay, explain to me, a cable access TV guy who's a democratic leftist, uh, how somebody as full of himself as Rush, who makes so many errors, who doesn't appear to be all that intellectual, who uh, is able to have such a massive uh, following. Is this the resurrecting of the know nothing tradition in the United States? Um, no, I'm going to give uh, uh, I mean I'm going to give Rush some some credit for some uh, for some personality, for uh, uh, basically in a lot of ways. Forget about the politics, which which I don't like, and which I think uh, um, sometimes uh, really border on being mean spirited. But if you strip away that, uh, uh, the guy, contrary by the way to uh, uh, a lot of what the the print media has has said about him is a fairly uh, is a fairly easy guy to listen to. Uh, he kids around. He religiously treats uh, callers uh, very well, even uh, those with whom he uh, he disagrees. He uh, uh, he he certainly makes uh, very controversial statements, and uh, and uh, and I would certainly say at times. Uh, you know, statements that at least border on being uh, mean-spirited. The one one thing th this may be an exclusive to your show, Bob, and I'm not saying that. Uh, by the way, there should be that the kind of questions you're raising about Rush Limbaugh should uh, should continue to be raised because I maintain that it's very possible to be uh, to be a, uh, a radio personality, a successful radio personality. Uh, on either side or on any side of the political spectrum, have some fun, make some jokes, uh, and still get your facts straight. I, I don't know why there has to be such a dichotomy on on talk radio. It's like it's like you have people. It seems that you have one class of people 
who uh, who spend all their time and energy on uh, on on getting their their facts straight and are almost like quasi news reporters and and don't necessarily really maybe work on their personalities and the entertainment factor to the extent they should. And then you have these people. Uh, you know, get all their facts it, it, wrong, but have personalities. Yeah, like it, John it seems, Corby, who you used to work. It seems to work that way. <laughs> well, you said that I didn't. He's left town. He can't answer for himself. But uh, uh, I, I was starting to say uh, when I was talking about what may be exclusive to your show, and th I, I'm surprised in a way that nobody's uh, nobody's picked up on this. Rush Limbaugh, in in uh, if if you if you've uh, kind of watched the uh, the flow of his show, which has been on the air nationally now for about six years, and and watched the way he works, he's actually moderated ever so slightly in a number of areas over the years. In in what, what, from neo fascism to ultra conservatism. Well, some that that may not be a bad analogy, but no, I, I am happy about the fact in in 1988 he was doing these little. Uh, he does these little updates on various uh, issues. He does environmental updates and feminist updates and things like that. Well, he was doing uh, he was doing uh, in 1988 when he came on AIDS updates and homeless updates, in which he would uh, literally make fun of of AIDS victims and homeless people. And he decided to stop doing that. And he substituted Jerry's kids, or uh, I don't. You'd no. have to ask him. <laughs> He's also, I didn't find out this out till the other day. This is interesting because it may be, it may be uh, a sign that Rush, who, who I think is a pretty savvy guy, uh, is, is on to the fact that, uh, that th these really uh, extreme social movements uh, are really not too in vogue anymore, even in a lot of uh, conservative circles. He's no longer using the word feminazi on the air. Has yeah, it, uh, hasn't that's used sort it of been a, a public pronouncement by him that he wouldn't do that. And uh, you may know this, uh, talking about the fringe groups, uh, Randall Terry's now attacking Pat Robertson from the right because Pat Robertson has been corrupted by politics, and it's Randall Terry. Uh, when he was in town, Randall Terry. We should, said, for anybody who doesn't know, Randall Terry is the uh, founder of Operation, Operation Rescue. Rescue, the militant uh, fetus waving sector of the. And he's really movement. moved into his new cash cow, of course, uh, homophobia. That's but what I he hear. pointed out that when he was in town and we had some son on the show, that he's one of the only people left that will, in fact, call for homosexuals to be stoned to death or killed publicly. Uh, and that he's really the right wing, and he's the representative of the Old Testament uh, standard of justice. What a lovely guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of, uh, you've got a lovely tie there, Jim. Yes. This, actually, Bob, this is the uh, first time I've worn this uh, for your show. Uh, you should be honored. This is, uh, the, this, this is the Rolling Stones' Some Girls Tie. Uh, wouldn't that be a politically incorrect Hi there, Jim. Well, d depends on who you're uh, talking to. Well, what about the Puerto Rican girls out in the studio that are dying to meet you? Well, they, they would actually <laughs> probably think it's uh, the epitome of political correctness. Yes. But uh, now anybody who knows anything about the Rolling Stones knows that some girls, uh, album that came out, what, uh, late 70s sometime, I think, was uh, uh, one of their biggest albums, also one of the most controversial. But, you know, Bob, it's like, uh, I've always believed there are kind of two sets of rules in the world. One for uh, the mass of humanity and another for the Rolling Stones. <laughs> and I think that's fairly just, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> it's just, you know who, who, who subscribes to that theory, by the way? Bill Bennett, the very conservative uh, former Secretary of Education. Uh, the Book of Virtue? Yeah, so the is, man who's, is a big Stones fan. Big so he Stones. writes about virtue, but the Rolling Stones, uh, by their very nature, wouldn't have to be virtuous. Or I, they wouldn't be the Stones. I think that's that's kind of his position, but he loves the Rolling Stones. Okay, but when were you with <laughs> the Stones or the Beatles when that first happened? Uh, were you a fan of the Beatles oh, or the Stones originally? Both. You, how could you be both, Jim? There was a, yeah. I was. I was probably, actually, probably, uh, probably a little more Beatles because I was I was kind of a premature, sensitive, new age guy. Kind and of, of course, uh, like a frat boy with a new age spirit. Yeah. Okay. The, the Stones are the antithesis of all that. And uh, let's see, you, end of the year uh, show, best movie you've seen this year, Jim? Well, Bob, uh, 
I don't know, about this time of year it all gets to be a blur, but you were with me last evening, Matt. Oh, I was not. Don't, <laughs> don't I have enough political problems? I was not. <laughs> don't take yourself uh, off the hook on this one. And the woman running camera right now was with us, too. Uh, uh, and it is, it is fairly rare that I see a movie twice. It is extremely rare that I see a movie three times. But the movie Clerks. Clerks. Which I hope is still playing. Which I found to be blasphemous. Oh, yeah. Shock. I was offended, was I not? Is that why you were rolling <laughs> on the floor all in disgust? I thought it was... Uh, in amusement. But it's black and the film was in black and white, made yeah. for what, thirty thousand dollars? And it's a, you've seen it three times? The low budget movie of the year, but it's it's just a great commentary on life. But, what it, what but it isn't is. this why? Because of people like yourself seeing this movie, isn't this why young mothers put their kids in the back seats of cars and kill them? To borrow from Newt Gingrich here. I d I don't don't follow. You that. didn't uh, Newt Gingrich <laughs> suggested that the mother who uh Killed yeah, their I kids know. was uh, it was somehow these liberal values. Yeah, I heard about which, that. Which uh, clearly, this movie Clerks, you'd have to be socially liberal uh, to go and see something like that, would you not? Yeah, just depraved. <laughs> <laughs> just depraved. <laughs> okay, so general uh, general depravity over uh, social liberalism. It uh, it it as we speak, it's showing at the Drexel Theater over but, on the east side. I I got the feeling that this is one of one of these uh, films, there seem to be an increasing number of them that, that start at art theaters like the Drexel. And by the time uh, this airs, clerks may, uh, may be at, at your local mall theater. But somehow, you got to see this one in the theaters. Well, I, I'm assuming it will be on home video, but I don't think you'll see this one even on cable because it, it narrowly... Uh, missed an, an X rating. It does have some very explicit it, language. It's not... No, no explicit sex scenes, though, really. No, but some very explicit language. Uh, it's not for kids under 12, but it's, it's uh, a great commentary on life. And if you're, uh, if you're uh, in your early 20s and you're uh, over-educated and over-skilled and you can't find work, this is a movie for you. Jim, is this really a movie that would pander to an elite, a feet core of impudent snobs? Poss uh, well, no. Uh, no, there's nothing snobbish about this. This is real life. This is like regular guy. Uh, there's nothing snobbish about clerks. And by the way, uh, uh, I happened to be in a local convenience store this afternoon, and, and the, the guy who was clerking there was like just, just uh, really going kind of crazy and he was attending to all kinds of things and he seemed to be under a lot of pressure and I told him that he had to see this movie and uh, he said to me well I really want to see it he goes uh, if it's anything like the previews I saw a few weeks ago it's very very real <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> what are you gonna do in your new real life as you had you're heading to Hartford I'm Connecticut. heading to Hartford Connecticut to uh, to program and consult, at least for a time, a uh, news and talk radio station. Sound familiar? Jim. Have I, <laughs> have I read this book before? Now, Jim, would the first thing you do is bring in all the homo-loving, baby killer, <laughs> feminazi types and uh, completely destroy the family values at this station? Well, uh, that's half right. We do bring those in, but we also uh, square them off against uh, uh, your basic uh, shaved head right wingers, and we watch them go at it, and it's fun. So uh, the old marketplace of ideas. That's uh, right. Yeah, what, both when, sides. When we talk about uh, liberalism, uh, and uh, I've been a big, uh, not a fan, but a tremendous critic of WTVN because I believe their political spectrum has shifted so far to the right since you left. But how much do you think the effects of, say, their owner being, you know? Uh, the Lindner family would would have on uh, the media in general. Uh, you mean on on that radio station that he owns? Yes. Uh, I I think uh, I think there's definitely uh, uh, an impact. On the other hand, uh, I will say in fairness that I was hired there, uh, and I spent a year and a half there uh, while he was uh, while he he was owning it. My sense is is that he. Uh, that it's really a, more of a financial investment uh, uh, for him. I'd be the first to say if I thought that uh, uh, he was getting involved uh, in the management of programming at this or 
at any uh, of the other radio or TV stations he owns. Now, I'm not saying that day won't ever come, and I'm not saying that uh, um, uh, I'm not saying that there couldn't come a time when he uh, uh, would uh, get involved, uh, especially if it were to protect his interests in one way or another. But uh, I don't. I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any uh, any particular evidence of that. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what I, I really think is is the most uh, dangerous aspect of that. I'm glad you brought that up. Is is uh, the, uh, the 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 various uh, people, uh, especially in the news departments of of his uh, radio stations, might be a little. Uh, naturally fearful before they do run a story. So it would really be self-censorship in part. For example, do you think that show would uh, go into what was, I think, the centerpiece of your campaign? And, and I think the most damning evidence against Governor Voinovich is what I consider the pay-to-play scheme mm -hmm. of which the Lindner family is probably the largest recipient of welfare, uh, money from the state. Yeah, you, you have to explain a little bit exactly what you mean uh, by that. It, it's been well documented in, in the Birch campaign. Uh, we documented uh, beyond the shadow of any doubt that uh, a number of the major Voinovich uh, campaign contributors were effectively getting uh, rewarded with various uh, state loans, grants, tax breaks, largely through the Department of Development, which seems to serve as the uh, reward station. Uh, for campaign contributors, what's really interesting is if you look at the uh, if you look at the timing of some of these deals. And the fact of the matter is that uh, well, the the Lindner family has given uh, Boinovich over a hundred thousand dollars since uh, 1990, and seventy three thousand of that figure came between January and October of '93. And guess what happened, Bob, on, I believe it was October 28th, 1993, at the end of this gush of campaign contributions? Um, nothing. And you're wrong. <laughs> okay, An we eight, got... $8.6 million dollar, uh, package of, of loans, grants, so and He was and doing a lot credits. better than Hillary was with the cattle there, I think. I as Rob Birch uh, said, as Rob Birch said, not a bad return on the dollar. And, and as Rob Birch also said, I think, uh, I think uh, pretty correctly, if uh, if if anybody's going to be loaning money back and forth, maybe it ought to be uh, Lindner loaning money to the state, state rather than vice versa. And uh, just recently, I know you wrote a final article in the in the Free Press as you were leaving town. You pointed out the zero percent interest loan that the Lindner family got. Uh, from the state of Ohio, right after the after. election, yeah. and you've got a lot of these zero percent interest loans. I, your Visa and Mastercard, oh, yeah. and oh, every day. <laughs> well, you've you've given me two or three just on your. Well, own. yeah, the five six bucks at a time. Feeding at that you, state trough <laughs> over there. You owe me for the popcorn. That was a zero percent interest thing, and I owe you for the uh, pig shampoo. You know, I started to say this. Yeah, Bob bought some <laughs> pig shampoo today for his uh, his pet. His pet, uh, what is that, Vietnamese pot-bellied pig. Yeah, I'm in favor of pork. I just like clean pork, Jim. But you touched on something uh, that I, I was starting to get onto about uh, 15 minutes ago. So all this talk about term limits, although it's interesting now that, uh, now that the uh, Republicans have taken over, uh, some of their leaders, even in the House of Representatives, are having second thoughts now. That would be term. impossible, Jim. That would make them shallow opportunists. Dick and Army, Dick Army, the face. new House Republican leader, uh, has been backpedaling on term limits. But uh, 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 if that's the case, he's he's right uh, the second time because uh, we just had. I think if uh, if if uh, the '94 election. Uh, should be a mandate for anything. It should be a mandate for an end to the term limits movement because it it goes to show that you can have term limits uh, anytime you want to when there's an election. I mean, we just had uh, we just had term limits in action. Mario Cuomo. Yeah. Uh, Tom Foley. Foley. Yeah. Dan Rostenkowski. If That's there's right. ever somebody who needed to bite the dust. John Kasich? Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, God, that was one of my favorite dreams, Jim. Uh, but no, it, uh, it goes to show that uh, the, the, best, 
the best term limits uh, happen at the ballot box. Okay, some uh, parting thoughts here on Columbus. What was it like to spend five and a half years of your life in Columbus, Ohio? It's a great town. It it's, truly is a great town, and uh, uh, I'm going to remember a lot of people Are you just here. saying that because you're no. trying to come back and no. get a job here? I may, I may come back okay. sometime. It's, a, it's a, a great town. I've done a lot of growing and changing here, and... Uh, uh, there is a lot of this town that uh, will be forever a part of me, and that's no jive. I think we're about out of time. Right? Oh, well, we're just about out of time. Okay. Well, I saw our, uh, our uh, production person giving us those signals. Uh, I think those were the five-minute signals, so if you got any other last things. Looked like she was having a heart attack to me. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> that could be the five-minute warning. Let me uh, go over here to this camera. Hi, Bob Petrakis. Here, one last time, maybe not one last time, because I'm sure when he, these liberals, when they slither in town, what I, what I found out is that lither, liberals these days slither. When they, Jim slithers back in town, he'll probably come to this studio and appear on this show. And uh, I'm sure he'll be checking in from time to time, letting us know what he's doing uh, around the country, uh, whether it's in Hartford or someplace else. And again, uh, I met Jim. Uh, just a uh, last story here. I was sleeping out with the homeless. The homeless, of course, criticized me because I put them in a wind tunnel. And uh, while we were there sleeping out and it was freezing, there was only one journalist in Columbus uh, who really came down and sought us out, which is probably why he ended up uh, not doing journalism anymore. But that was <laughs> Jim Blycamp who came down and wanted, here's the big problem here, wanted the homeless advocates and the homeless people uh, on his show. And it's that sort of, uh, I think, really, Jim, it was, it was the best newsman in Columbus, uh, particularly the news he used to do at CD 101, not just because occasionally it allowed me to do analysis, but he really was all over town, and he broke a lot of stories. And uh, sure, he's not Cindy Lazarus's bosom buddy, but <laughs> he was a hell of a newsman. I, I, I am speechless. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jim Blycamp. I wouldn't dare follow that. Speechless. And uh, that's it then. Check in. Thank you, Bob. And, uh, of course, uh, your tie. Yes. And uh, this is it. Uh, one last time. Big Jim Blycamp, <laughs> some girl's time. <laughs> this is it. The end of an era. I'm alone. I'm isolated. What happens next? There's a whole waiting list of people uh, wanting to get on this show. Yeah, name one. Greg Lashetka, <laughs> Chalmers Wiley. Chalmers P. Wiley, <laughs> John Kasich. Yeah, I didn't say what they were going to say or not say when they get here. They just, they want to confront you, Bob, is what it boils down to. Well, Jim, they're always welcome on from the Democratic left, as you are. Thanks. It's the end of the year show. Goodbye. Stop. Spin <laughs> us out. <laughs> Yeah.
get you.